Welcome again to the Centre for Christian Spirituality and we welcome you in difficult times as we are faced with the virus that is changing the way we live currently and probably into the future as well. And we hope that perhaps the prayers that are associated with our reading of the scriptures might be a contribution, um, a prayerful contribution towards the solution of the virus. It has been recommended that in the light of the fact that Masses may not be available. Lexio Divina, the reading of the scriptures, is something that could be used instead. Today we're going to reflect on the Gospel of the fifth Sunday uh, of Lent, and it's the Gospel about Lazarus, and we'd like you to listen to the reading. Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was ill. So the sisters sent a message to Jesus, Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, this illness does not lead to death, rather it is for, the God, for God's glory, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Accordingly, Though Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, after, after having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then, after this, he said to the disciples, Let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the, Lord, the Jews were just now trying to, sh to stone you, and are you going there again? Jesus answered, are there not twelve hours of daylight? Those who walk during the day do not stumble because they see the light of this world. But those who walk at night stumble because the light is not in them. After saying this, he told them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will be all right. Jesus, however, had been speaking about his death, but they thought that he was referring merely to sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. For your sake I am glad I was not there, so that you may believe. But let us go to him. Thomas, who, called, who was called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let us also go, that we may die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away, and many of the Jews had come out to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live and everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. When she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary and told her privately, The teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come to the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. The Jews who were with her in the house, consoling her, saw Mary get up quickly and go out. They followed her because they thought she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. 
He said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could he not have opened the eyes of the blind? Or could he, who opened the eyes of the blind, uh, have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus again, greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench because he has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus looked upwards and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I I know that you always hear me, But I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary, and had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. This is a very long and rich story. Uh, And firstly, before we look at individual bits, we need to look at the, the context where it comes. It's really the last sign that Jesus does. It marks the conclusion of his public ministry. And even though it's not included in today's gospel, the real end of this event is when the Jewish authorities decide that he has to go, that this is the last straw, as it were, and they plot again to kill him. So it comes at a very significant part, which leads in to the passion narrative and the resurrection of Jesus himself. I think we need to look at what is the core of the reading rather than get lost in all the richness. And I'd like to suggest that this is uh, reversing the way Jesus usually does miracles. Often he does a miracle and then he explains it. What he does this time is he explains it and then the miracle confirms the explanation. So that the real focus is really the words of Jesus to Martha. When he says, I am the resurrection and the life. This is an expression that John often uses. I am the light of the world. I am the bread of life. I am the shepherd. I am the way, the truth, and the life. A very significant statement, probably linked to that Old Testament mm. saying that where God is, I am. So that's, that's the text that's important. And of course, what immediately follows, where he says, uh, those who believe in me, even though they die, uh, they, they will live, and everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. So Jesus is establishing his own identity and relationship to life and resurrection. And then the miracle with regards to Lazarus actually confirms um, what he has said. I think there are two other themes that are very central. The first is believe, right, that Jesus almost sets up the death. He sort of doesn't go immediately. And he says, I'm not going, that you may believe. In other words, I'm going to do something. And he says again later that um, it, it happened so that you could see the glory of God. So two things there, that, that this is the glory of God that is being manifested here, a very important theme for John. And of course, the passion is the glorification of Jesus and the glorification of God. And believing the whole of the gospel has as its focus Um, that we come to believe in Jesus. You can see things about John's literary style there of misunderstanding. The apostles think that Jesus is talking about um, Lazarus being asleep. He's talking about him uh, being dead. And Martha talks about, well, I know he'll rise at the end, but Jesus is talking about what is about to happen. So that idea of misunderstanding is something that's quite common uh, as a literary device um, in John. But I think the thing, the focus are the words of Jesus and the miracle that follows and the fact that this is meant to bring people to believe and 
that they believe because this is a manifestation of the glory of God. Mm. So those are my thoughts on them. No. I, I, I am going to say, look, it is so dense and rich, this passage, but the, I suppose the thing that struck me is there's nothing more, um, and Jesus mentions this, that he's doing this miracle for the glory of God, and he even mm. speaks to the Father to say, yes. uh, I'm going to do this miracle and I know that you're here. What strikes me is, so that is like a universal, an immense moment when God reveals who God is. However, John is amazing because it happens in the most intimate circumstances, once again with Martha, Mary and Lazarus, the family situation. And to me, it's that, you know, that huge clashing of the incarnation happens in the flesh and blood of small family situation. Um, I suppose it is a detail to the story, but it, it's one that makes me inhale and just catches me that somehow or other it's um, Jesus' absolute. When he weeps for the death of Lazarus and he engages in that utter grief that prompts this miracle to occur, I know it's a universal statement here as Jesus you know, goes into his resurrection, mm. but there's something about his heart being moved mm -hmm. by this um, human event. And I, I'm a slow learner. Um, I, I couldn't help when I'm hearing this story also reverberating the story of Martha and Mary, the very mm -hmm. simple story of Martha and Mary. But this time, both Martha and Mary seem like very different sisters mm -hmm. than they were mm -hmm. when we met them earlier in the Gospel. Yes. Mm -hmm. it, it's um, a, f a few comments if you thought. Yeah. Well I'll uh, uh, offer a comment perhaps just a, a little different maybe but w preparing and, and reflecting on this took me back to something you said a couple of weeks ago David that we read the text the words it's there and there's another part that we've got to do is make it our own and, and how it comes alive for us and I guess it really struck me with this because I was seeing uh, Lazarus in the tomb, that we so often are in tombs, entombed uh, because of our own whatevers and it's from though that those tombs we create for ourselves or allow ourselves to be immersed in that we need to be freed from. And Jesus, when we, we do respond, he's there at the, at the entrance to the tomb waiting for us to draw us out and in the drawing out to offer to us life. And, and, and I think it does sit with what you and Virginia said in uh, aspects of that. But that's how it, it touched me today. Thank you, John and Virginia. What we've really done now is we've done two things. We've first of all tried to give you an idea of what Matthew, um, John rather, was saying to the people of his time in the Gospel. But we've also tried to show you that in our own reading there's a message for us as well. Yeah. That the historical critical method answers the question, what is John saying to the people of his time? And the spiritual uh, um, usage of the scriptures asks the question, what is God saying to me now? So we're asking you now to just reflect on the Gospel and respond to the question, of what is God uh, uh, saying to you now? That's what is the focus um, of Alexio. So please, just look at it, by all means taking into account what we've said. But really, it's the personal dimension. What is it that God is saying to you uh, at this time? Welcome back. We want now to um, invite you to listen to the text again. Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was ill, so the sisters sent a message to Jesus. Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, This illness does not lead to death. Rather, it is for God's glory, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. 
Accordingly, though, Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, and after having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after this he said to the disciples, Let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now trying to stone you, and are you going there again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours of daylight? Those who walk during the day do not stumble, because they see the light of this world. But those who walk at night stumble, because the light is not in them. After saying this, he told them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will be all right. Jesus, however, had been speaking about his death but they had thought he was referring merely to sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. For your sake I am glad I was not there, so that you may believe. But let us go to him. Thomas, who was called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let us also go in, that we may die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him, while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. And Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise again. And Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. When she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary and told her privately, The teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she got up and quickly went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come to to the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. The Jews who were with her in the house, consoling her, saw Mary get up quickly and go out. They followed her because they thought she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who came with her also weeping, He was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not he have opened the eyes of the blind man, have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus again, greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench, because he has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you will always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you have sent me. When he said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The man came out with his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in a cloth. And Jesus said to him, Unbind him and let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary, had seen what Jesus did, believed in him.
I, I felt I'd like to be like uh, Martha and, and just say, I do believe, because it's about belief. But I, I, I think it's good to reflect on believing because it's not just believing intellectually, mm. I think we all do that, but it, it's believing in the sense of thereby wanting to live in yeah. the way that Jesus yeah. invites yeah. us to live. Mm. So to me it's a reflection, it means a reflection on what it means to believe. And I think that looking at how we are living our, our faith life is something that we need to do often. I suppose in a similar vein, on a second yeah. reading, you do, do hear that word believe. Yeah. For me, what came is this concept of surrender to um, God's will in my life, like he asks Martha and Mary, D don't you believe? Like it's this, yeah. So for me, what I'm taking from this is that concept that I forget on a regular basis to surrender to, um, to God's will in my life. I was thinking of the ways in which I find myself imprisoned and it could be uh, because I've got a deadline to meet, it could be a word that's spoken that upsets me, it could be a whole number of reasons. And uh, I, I can be down in the dumps and despondent as a consequence of all of that and wonder if there is light at the end of the tunnel. But the whole idea of belief, I, 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 I think, is, is sits in there. And, and it's something, um, I think, too, that Pope Francis said just in the last few days about uh, uh, the inability for some to be able to go to reconciliation in these difficult times and said, but God is our, our Father and loves us. He waits there every night looking out from the balcony uh, for us. So all we've got to do is come to him and just be honest with him. And, 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 and I think that's an expression of belief. I guess that's where I would like to be, looking at what I need to let go of and I can let go of if my faith is there in a very practical way in this person, Jesus Christ. We invite you now to draw something practical from the text, from your reflections. Uh, remember that um, if things just stay on the level of the intellect, they're not going to um, affect your life. That with the scriptures, what begins in the scriptures needs to end up in your life. And therefore, we need to draw practical things which will affect the way we live. So we invite you now to just draw something practical from the text that you can implement in your life. There is one more step before we conclude, and that is to ask the Lord for the strength and the grace that we need to fulfill what we want to do. It's one thing to want to do it, it's another thing to have the strength and the courage to do it. Let us pray quietly, asking for that strength and that courage. Thank you for being with us. We have appreciated your presence at a difficult time in our, in our history. I think it is good to come together around the scriptures because there we are coming into contact with the Lord and ultimately we have to accept what is the Lord's way within the environment in which we are. It's going to change a lot of us, it's going to hurt some people and some people will lose their lives. But we have to recognise in it God speaking to us in some way and we need to respond appropriately. As we conclude, we're going to read from the uh, prayer of the liturgy for the fifth Sunday um, of Lent. By your help, we beseech you, Lord our God, may we walk eagerly in that same charity with which our love for the world, which out of love for the world, your Son handed himself over to death through Christ our Lord.